you own or just came across a large collection of Sports Illustrated magazines. Do they have any value? How do you sell them? Where do you begin? If you have those questions, I've got your answers. What's up guys, this is Brad. So all the time I get messages from people on social media saying things like, hey, I just came across this large collection of Sports Illustrated magazines. You know, maybe they were passed down from a family member. Maybe they were picked up at an estate sale or, or maybe it's a collection that this person just had personally stored for many years and they're just now pulling out. And they always ask, you know, how do I go about selling these? Are these valuable? Where do I get started? It's The truth is it's a lot to process. There's a lot going on. It's a lot to comprehend. And if you, you know, are not familiar at all with the collectible space and, you know, some of these different things, then it can be uh, a little bit overwhelming trying to figure out how to manage this Sports Illustrated collection. So what I've actually put together is a seven-step process to help anyone who's in that boat, anyone who is looking to basically offload this large Sports Illustrated collection that they have in their possession. Now, please understand, this is not, you know, uh, written law. Um, this is going to vary for every person. Each situation can be a little bit different. But um, in general, if you're just looking for some guidelines to help you get started, then I think that what I'm going to present to you will be very helpful. So one of the first things that I want to say before I start going through these steps is, as you are going through your Sports Illustrated collection, and as you start breaking them into the different groups that I'm going to advise you on, make sure that you are taking extra care in maintaining the condition of your magazines because as you will find out when it comes to selling sports illustrated the condition of the magazine matters you want to be very careful as you move these around as you you know create stacks create piles however you do it uh, you want to try and preserve your magazines in as, as best condition as you possibly can from what they already are you know anything like bins or folds or tears or color breaks um, those are all going to detract from the potential value uh, that you could get from selling your magazine. So once again, take extra care. In fact, if you're going to stack magazines, I highly recommend that you, rather than stacking them all on top of each other facing the same direction, alternate every single one. Have one on the bottom, flip the next one up, upside down, and then the, the third one would be the same as the first, and then the fourth one would be upside down again, and continue to alternate. Because if you think about it, if you stack a large group of Sports Illustrated, all one on top of each other, they're all facing the same direction, the spine of that uh, magazine is going to, you know, it's going to, it's going to create an unbalanced distribution of weight and you'll actually start to see the spine, you know, the side with the binding where the staples are, that's going to curl up and all of that is going to, it's going to create extra stress and stress and potentially extra damage on your magazine. So once again, just be aware as you're sorting these, you need to try and be wary of condition. Of course, it's best to actually bag and board all of your individual magazines. But if you're in the situation where you're actually needing to watch this video, I'm assuming you don't have bags and boards. You probably don't even know what that is. It's just a it's a way to safely store uh, comics and magazines without damaging them. But uh, just in general, do your best to keep them in good condition. All right, so the very first thing that I would do is I would take your entire collection and I'd break it into two groups. Group number one is going to be all of your magazines from before 1990. Group number two is going to be all of your magazines from 1990 and later. Now, we're going to break these two groups into even further groups here in just a minute. But for now, that's a great place to get started because for the most part, um, there's not going to be as much collectability. There's not as many issues post-1990 that uh, have value as some of those before 1990. So go ahead and get started. Break them into those two groups with 1990 as your split. Okay, step number two, now that you've broken them into these two subsets from before 1990 and after 1990, I want you to take your older group from pre-1990 and we're going to break that into three more groups, okay? And the very first one that you're going to set aside, you're going to make a new group with all of your issues from before 1990 that have no mailing label on the cover, all right? If it has a mailing label on the cover, it's what's called a subscription issue. That means it was probably sent through the mail directly to somebody's house who is a subscriber to the magazine. If it does not have a label on the cover, it's what's called a newsstand. A newsstand issue would have been purchased directly from the store at the newsstand rack. So because, so because Sports Illustrated had such a large subscriber base, 
96% of its print run every week was subscription copies with that mailing label attached. So the newsstand copies with no labels, they are significantly more rare. And one of the most important things for you to understand as you break up your collection and try to get the most value possible out of them is that the newsstands are typically, typically going to carry the most value for you. Now, even if a label is t removed from a subscription issue, it's still gonna remain a subscription because it's almost impossible to get those labels off without leaving some sort of glue residue, uh, paper tear, color loss, and uh, you know people will be able to tell that. So the new stands are really the first thing you wanna look for, and you wanna set those all into a separate category on their own. Every single issue you have that did not have a mailing label on the cover, that's gonna be your group number one. Group number two, with all of your remaining copies that do have a subscription label, you can go ahead and pull out a few of those into a second category. And uh, those are gonna be the ones with major stars on the cover. And when I say major stars, I mean major stars. I'm not just talking like a you know basic um, all-star you know player who made a couple all-star teams. I'm talking like Hall of Famers, like legendary type guys, Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky. Um, Wilt Chamberlain, uh, Pele, um, Willie Mays, you know, those type of major stars, if they're on the cover, if it's a prominent cover with one of those stars on there, even if it has a label, go ahead and set them aside and make a second pile for them. And then your third group is going to be anything else that has a subscription label and doesn't have a major, you know, superstar Hall of Fame athlete on the cover. All right, step number three, let's now go back to your post-1990 magazine group, and you're gonna break those into two additional groups. And with those, you're basically gonna take everything with no label. So once again, you're gonna set aside all of your newsstands. And then secondly, you're gonna make a second group with all of those that do have labels, all of those subscription copies. Now, of those subscription copies from 1990, there are pretty much uh, what I've identified as five. There's, there's probably only five single issues after 1990 from Sports Illustrated, that would really be worth your time of trying to sell individually. And here's these five issues. So first off is the Tiger Woods first cover from 1996, which looks like this. You've got the Kobe Bryant first cover from 1998. You've got the LeBron James first cover from 2002. You have the Tom Brady first cover from 2002, and you also have the Steph Curry first cover from 2013. If you find any of those five, even if it has a, uh, a mailing label on the cover, you may want to pull those five aside. But other than that, every single other issue from post-1990, you can go ahead and group together in a category um, with subscription labels. Okay, step number four, you're going to take all of your newsstands, doesn't matter if it was pre-1990 or post-1990, but all of your newsstands that had no labels, plus you can also look at any of your pre-1990s with major stars that you pulled aside into that separate category. Look at those three piles and you're going to try and determine collectability. You're going to try and determine, okay, of these newsstands uh, or these major stars with labels, um, do any of these have potential value? And, and here's what you're looking for. So especially with your newsstands, you're going to look for any stars or Hall of Famers. Uh, these don't necessarily have to be the ultra level legends like I talked about. With these, you know, with newsstands, you can get a little, you know, you can move down a tier. You can look at uh, some guys who maybe were just all stars a few times or maybe fringe Hall of Fame type guys. And, you know, if you're, if you don't know anything about sports whatsoever, um, you might have to do some research. You might have to ask some, uh, someone you know who does know about sports. You may have to log on to some. Uh, sports groups or some magazine groups and ask some questions about some of the covers you have. Uh, you may have to do some Googling and look up these people who are on your cover and say, hey, is this a Hall of Famer? Is this you know, someone who seems to be popular? But you're going to try and need to determine that because the value of a specific cover is largely driven by who's on that cover and what type of image it is. Um, you especially want to check for first covers. So that website that I just showed you, um, I was showing you a couple specific first covers. This is going to be a great resource for you, sportsillustratedissues.com. You can go to this website and you can search any 
athlete who's ever been on a Sports Illustrated cover. So let's say that you want to look at Magic Johnson. Okay, I start typing his name. It pops up here. I'm going to click on Magic Johnson. It's going to give me a list of every Sports Illustrated cover that Magic Johnson was on. So you can see 36 issues found. They're in chronological order, starting with the most recent. So I'm actually going to scroll down. And he's got two pages worth of cover. So I'm going to go to the second page. And I'm going to scroll down again. And you can see right here, this cover from November 27th, 1978, this was Magic Johnson's first Sports Illustrated cover. That one has significant value because if you're familiar with sports cards, you know that a rookie card is typically the most valuable card for an athlete. It was the first card that came out of that player. The same concept applies to Sports Illustrated magazines. That first cover often carries extra collectability and extra value. So as you see here, uh, this Magic Johnson first cover is probably going to carry more value than most of these other covers that he was on. So you can use this website to check through some of the athletes and the covers that you have and see, oh, is this so-and-so's first cover? And if it is, once again, that could really be some added collectability. The next thing that you're wanting going to do is check the condition of the magazines. Like I said earlier, condition matters. The better condition that a magazine is in, the fewer bends and folds and creases and color breaks, the more potentially valuable that it is. And lastly, you can research past sales. So I've got eBay pulled up here. That's probably the best place to look up some uh, past sales and get an idea on what some of these items are selling for. So whatever magazine you're looking at, type it in the search bar here. I've typed Michael Jordan, Sports Illustrated 1983. And that's going to pull up all of the current listings. Now, here's one thing to be aware of. Do not go off of the prices that you see these listings for. The truth is, Anyone could list a magazine at any price that they want. That doesn't mean someone's buying it at that price. That just means that's what it's listed for. But what you really want to do is you want to look at the sold listings. You want to look at the completed sales because how much someone is actually paying for a magazine is the true value. So on this search, once I've searched this, I'm then going to hit advanced and I'm going to go to, or if, if you're on your phone, you would hit filter and we're gonna select sold items. And I'm gonna hit search. And now it's gonna show me the items that have actually sold. So you can see here, this is actually a newsstand copy of Michael Jordan's first cover from 1983 that never had a label and it sold for $898 just the other day. Here's one that did have a label, sold for $48.29. Here's one that did have a label, only sold for $5. Here's one that uh, did not have a label, could have been removed. Tough to tell just from this picture. You might want to click in and read the description or look at the pictures, but it sold for $250. Here's a graded copy with a label, sold for $295. Um, here's a newsstand copy, sold for $149. So once again, uh, just go through and kind of get an idea from some of these sales on what an approximate price could be based on the cover that you have, based on whether it's a newsstand or has a label, and uh, you know, based on the approximate condition from what you can tell. Okay, the next thing that you wanna do once you've looked through some of these newsstands, you've tried to determine the collectability and some of the past sales and the potential value, you wanna make a determination, is this worth grading? And you might be asking yourself right now, what the heck is grading? Well, grading is where you send your magazine off to a third-party company. CGC is actually the company that grades magazines, and they will assess your magazine based on its condition. They will encapsulate it in a nice slab. They will put a grade at the top. They will label what the magazine is, and it, it then becomes kind of a, you know, a, a certified collectible that's easier to display and that's kind of been you know authenticated and uh, has been judged based on its condition and all those things. And, it, and oftentimes makes it easier to sell. So uh, now getting into grading is a little bit of a big step, especially for a beginner who's never done this. So, uh, you know, once again, I understand this might be more than what some people are willing to really get into, but you also need to think about how, depending on what you've got, you could potentially be leaving a lot of money on the table if you don't get certain issues graded. And so this is the website for CGC. They primarily do comics, but uh, they also do Sports Illustrated magazines. And if you wanna go to grading, you could take a look at their um, different 
Um, actually, I think it might be under submit. I'm going to go under submit and look at their services and fees. And you can see some of their different prices and um, you know what that looks like if you're going to submit a, a magazine for grading. So I scroll down here to magazines. You can see they break them up into two groups. Uh, modern for them is anything after 1975. And the, the uh, fee per item is $25 to send in a single magazine to be graded. Turnaround time is you're going to usually get that back in about 30 business days. Uh, for vintage, for a magazine before 1975, you've got a different fee here and so on. There's different service levels depending on how fast you want to get it back and um, when the magazine is from. But basically, <clears throat> look around CGC's website and... Um, kind of educate yourself a little bit on what that looks like. You can even go back to eBay and, you know, we did see, I think one graded sports illustrated magazine as we were looking through here earlier, but I'm just going to turn, I'm going to search CGC sports illustrated and take a look at all these different uh, graded sports magazines. And actually I've still got my filter on to show sold items. So here you go, here you go. You can see this Tom Brady 9.8 sold for $700 Here's a uh, Ozzy Smith 9.2. A best offer was accepted for less than 185. Michael Jordan 9.4 sold for 165, and so on. You can look through some of these sales and just get an idea of um, of <clears throat> basically how much these are selling for, and uh, that can help you determine if the if the specific issue that you have is worth grading. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you are going to send in a magazine for grading, I highly recommend that you look to get that magazine cleaned and pressed. And so basically what that means is before you send the magazine in, you can um, have somebody kind of clean your magazine up, get a lot of dirt off of there, uh, maybe whiten up the cover. And then you do something called pressing where you actually stick the magazine inside of like a t-shirt clamp, a t-shirt press, and it really flattens out the magazine. It takes out a lot of those uh, bends and creases and it makes the magazine much more presentable and it can give you a pretty significant bump in a grade. You know, if you send in a magazine as is, it could be a seven, uh, could grade it a 7.0, whereas if you cleaned it and pressed it, it could, you know, maybe bump that all the way up to an 8.5, something like that. If you want the highest grade possible, it's recommended that you do cleaning and pressing. Now, that's something that uh, takes a while to get into, takes a lot of practice. So I'd recommend that you find a, you know, third party provider who can do that. That's something that I can do. There's some other individual people out there and, you know, you can just search online and uh, find some some companies who will do that. And actually even CGC will do it for you themselves, although there is some debate whether or not their pressing service is the best option. Um, and then, you know, lastly, you would go ahead and submit your magazines through CGC. They've got a bunch of FAQs on their site so you can read through how to actually submit, what that process looks like, um, how to fill out your submission, how to actually package your magazines and send them, all that stuff. You know, it takes a little bit of time. Um, but depending on what you've got, it could be worth it and um, definitely worth looking into. And lastly, once you've got them graded, where do you sell them? Well, uh, as you saw, eBay is a great option. There's tons of them that are sold regularly on eBay. Uh, Facebook groups can be a good place because then if you can find you know, someone that you trust making a deal with and you can avoid those seller's fees um, that you know eBay will charge you. Uh, there's a Facebook group out there for Sports Illustrated collectors called CGC Sports Illustrated. Highly recommend that you search that group and there's lots of potential buyers on there. And if you have something really big, if you have something that you know may have value of a thousand dollars or higher, I would highly recommend sending it off to Heritage Auctions. That's kind of where the majority of the high value sales are taking place right now. All right, and so what about all of the individual issues that you identified that you do think have some value, but maybe they're not worth grading? I mean, we already saw that the grading fee for a modern magazine at the slowest service is $25 per issue, you know, plus you got to take into consideration um, the uh, the shipping cost. And then if you want to get a magazine press, that's some extra costs. So really, you know, if a, if a magazine is worth $50 or less, as is, um, it, or, you know, it, I take that back. If it's going to be worth $50 or less after graded, then it, it might not be worth it for you to go through the hassle of grading, but you know, it still may have some value on its own. Maybe it's t worth $25, um, as an individual, just ungraded magazine. So what about all those? 
you know, you went through your individual stacks, you went through your new stands, uh, both before 1990 and after 1990, you went through your um, pre-1990 issues with labels that have major superstars. So of those issues that you found that you don't really want to grade, but you think could sell individually, uh, what do you do with them? Well, once again, check the past sales on eBay and um, list those magazines individually on either eBay, Facebook Marketplace, um, maybe even have a yard sale, uh, maybe look at some of those Facebook groups that I mentioned before. And step number seven, the truth is this is probably going to be the majority of your Sports Illustrated issues. If you had a handful of copies that fell into those other categories that I've already talked about, then good for you. You probably can make a little bit of money off of some of those. But most of the Sports Illustrated issues aren't going to carry a lot of value. That's basically every issue that has a mailing label on there other than the the small handful that we've already identified and you know it also may even include some newsstands you may have a newsstand magazine but it has some totally random person on the cover or maybe it doesn't even have a person maybe it's just some random item and uh, it doesn't have any collectability whatsoever that sometimes is the case too or or it's in terrible condition so for all of those that don't fall into the you know more valuable categories you're going to need to sell them together as bulk and you're probably going to have to look at selling them locally because of the weight of selling large amounts of sport of Sports Illustrated magazines. Um, shipping costs add up really, really quickly, and it kind of makes it cost prohibitive to sell a large collection of Sports Illustrated through the mail. So you're probably going to be want to you're probably going to want to look at places like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist where you can post them online and make a sale, but someone has to come pick those items up. Uh, or once again, you could host a yard sale. And uh, truthfully, you're going to need to price these items very low per magazine if you want to have any chance of selling them. I think that uh, once again, this is only for the magazines that didn't fall into those earlier categories, uh, those earlier categories um, of, you know, a um, Hall of Fame athletes on newsstands and, and that type of thing. You're going to want to sell them individually, but for everything else, you know, I think 25 cents per magazine is a decent baseline. So if you've got a stack of 100 of what I would consider bulk Sports Illustrated magazines, uh, $25 is probably a, a realistic price of what you might be able to sell those for. If you got a huge uh, group of 1,000, 250 is probably a pretty realistic price of what you might be able to sell those for. So just set your expectations accordingly. Understand as you go through this collection, if you're really wanting to take the time to get the most bang for your buck, you're going to have to divvy out and find those new stands and find those specific issues that are collectible and uh, that probably the majority of them are going to fall into this bulk category. All right, that's it. I hope that was helpful to you. Um, like I said, this doesn't apply to every single scenario. There's going to be some variances, but these are just some general guidelines to help those who uh, really have no idea where to get started. I'm happy to answer questions. If you want to leave a comment on the video or shoot me an email, uh, my email is listed in the description. Uh, like I do, like I said, I do uh, clean and press, and I can definitely give you guidance on maybe best places or prices or you know whatever step that you need help with in the selling process. Um, I've been doing this for a couple years now and definitely have seen a lot of different scenarios and can help you figure out what to do with your magazine. So if you have not yet, please uh, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And I appreciate likes and comments. Until the next video, I'll see you next time.